Hello. Here for Dishonored 2 review with one apps. Hello. Hello. How are you doing, mate? Good. You? Not bad, not bad. Got the uh, pressures on for the new host. Ha- hashtag let top host. Let's see if it takes off. If, if enough people hashtag it and it trends, it could bad. be a permanent fixture. Thanks, and I'm up for that. We are reviewing Dishonored 2, released yes. November 2016. Correct. This comes after the 2012 game, Dishonored. Yes. Um... I enjoyed it. A lot of other people did. Yes. Uh, did it review well? I can't remember. You, yeah. you would have given your own review, wouldn't you? Yeah, so the, the original I gave... I, put, I, I played the definitive edition, so that was the one with the DLC bundled in and all the other stuff. And it was Obviously, it had been slightly up for the consoles at that time for PS4 and Xbox One. I gave it a right. silver. And was that... Oh, Okay. Silver he's gone for, right. Okay then. Um has, is that the first time you played it then? You didn't play it when it was on the old gen consoles? I had it on the three sixty and I think I got about five missions in and just I just didn't have the energy or the motivation to finish it. And it's always one of those games right. that uh, after we moved off the three sixty and started using PS4 and Xbox One, I always thought, oh, you know what, I really wish I had completed that game because it did review well. It was something that was quite unique. Um, so when they announced the, the definitive edition, um, I was over the moon. I was like, excellent, now I'm going to get a chance to play it. Because uh, the old mm. PC at the time wasn't going to cut it, so it was going to be my new route. And I was really happy to, to play through that. I loved it. Right. Oh, good. So that sets you up for Dishonored 2. Yes. Now, <clears throat> was it how, how long after release was this that you played it? Um, I probably I just finished it, sort of, I think... End of July, so it's been a little while, and it's given okay. me time to digest it. But I got it quite late on. I didn't get it out of the gate, and because we both no. picked it up for a tenner, didn't we? Ten yeah, yeah. UK pounds, UK pounds. <laughs> yeah. which is a great uh, any game really. Yeah. At that price, if I'm honest, is, yeah. is a decent price. So it sets you up now straight off the bat with your first impressions. Did you need to play the first game to understand what was going on, or can you go in blind? You can go in blind, I think. It kind of just, you know, you can read up at what happens, but it's not, it sets itself up quite nicely. Um, there's a couple of callbacks to it in certain areas, but nothing, you know, that you wouldn't understand. They don't rely heavily yeah. on it. Um, right. Yeah, so you're still using, you can choose in this one rather than, you know, in, in the first game, you have to be Corvo. Uh, in yeah. Dishonored 2, you can be Corvo or Emily. So it can right, give, you, okay. give you another option. Nice. And do those two characters play differently, or is it much the same? Or yeah, so I only played through as Emily. I didn't bother with Corvo. Uh, I, didn't, okay. I, I didn't go through. Already it done it. Yeah. I thought, yeah, exactly. In one, I've already done it. But there's, <laughs> there's different dialogue for certain parts of the game, and they share a few abilities, but they've also got some unique ones. So right, okay. they've got so with, with a different playthrough, you conceivably you could have quite a different experience because the powers okay. themselves, you build your, your each of them out differently. You could have you know a completely different playthrough almost. So mm-hmm. um, worth experimenting with or, or perhaps reading up on some of the powers before making your choice, just to figure out what you think is going to be more entertaining. But I think both sides, Corvo and Emily, they've both got excellent powers to play with, and that's something that's a definite plus with the game. Experimenting with those. Oh, nice. Is that something that was sort of improved on in this this uh, second game, uh, the sandbox element? You know, I, I quite liked on the first game the different variations you could do on missions. You could yep. replay it and do it a completely different way. Did they improve on that in this one? Yeah, I mean, with some of Emily's unique powers, they offer you com- some, some new routes on how to do things. So um, the level design and the way the kind of, you know, it's, it's structured fits perfectly mm. with this style of play so like you said there are multiple ways to complete your tasks you're often given a, a lethal and a non-lethal way of doing each of your targets that you're assigned to um and there's some really interesting ways about how you can go about that and you're kind of you know left to to, to make your own kind of uh a route through and you can you can go yeah. full stealth you can go you know killing people you can try and do a bit of a mixture of both but you've certainly got the freedom to express yourself how you wish to and, yeah. and play around 
That's good. Um, characters, we've got obviously Corvo from The Hero. Yeah. Uh, young Emily. Were there any others that stuck out? Was it a good grade of characters or were they quite forgettable? They were a little bit forgettable. I kind of preferred the uh, Dishonored 1 setup. Oh, yep. yep. Um, I just felt it was a little bit more. Um, I don't know, a little bit cleaner. It's, this one kind of. You know, it wasn't as I didn't find it as you know enthralling as the others. It's a very yeah. standard setup. The last one's a very standard setup, but yeah, um, not really many twists and turns. You're kind of working towards the end, and you know you'll you'll get there, and the story will be probably what you what you expected it to be at the end of the day. Yeah, well, as as the story, obviously, we do our reviews here, spoiler free. But yep. the story as a whole, what were your thoughts on that? I'd say average. You know, average yeah. to, to good. Nothing, like I said, off. It's you could, you know, take it or leave it. They set it up nicely, but other than that, it's you know, it's cliche stuff. And um, I think that's where it kind of it doesn't quite live up to its predecessor is in the story front. Um, right. Okay, that's very really good. Graphics wise, one thing I really liked about the first one was the sort of the setting and the stylization of it. It's almost like a sort of artwork. Well, it's like mm. a sort of paint moving paintings almost yeah um there's obviously this is a, a next gen game now they, they've binned off the old console so yeah was there a big difference in this one did it stick out did you think oh yeah so <laughs> they they use a little bit more color in this because you're in different locations I mean, I mean, okay the first one it's very gray and oh, dark yeah, isn't yeah. it and being around yeah done more and whatnot but this time they've they kind of using different locations and brighter settings so that kind of makes it a bit nicer on the whole it's not it's not going to be, you know, uncharted levels of no. of graphical fidelity, but it's it's definitely. I do like the art style of it, and if you enjoyed the first one, then you, you'll enjoy how it looks uh, in Dishonored Two as well. Nice. They have now since released a, um, a standalone DLC. Yes. Um, I think it's what's it called? Dishonored: The Death of the Outsider, or something like that. That's the one. Yeah. yeah. Is that the one? Playing number two, is this hyped you for the standalone or you, there's no rush? No rush. And I mean, yeah, I it kind of, I want to finish the, the collections. As far as I know, that's probably going to be the last outing for Dishonored. Because um, right. Dishonored 2 in particular sold pretty poorly, which is why mm. we're picking up for 10 UK pounds less than a year <laughs> after release. Um, so I will definitely dip into... Uh, death of the outsider and go through that um, but there's yep. no there's no rush or urgency for me to do that with all the other stuff that we've got going on at this time of year nice okay well, that's good to hear um right so i suppose it's time for your closing thoughts and then the formalities yeah so i mean closing thoughts if you liked the first game this is more of the same plus some added extras and some more interesting powers um the the story not probably as good, but the the gameplay level design better in my opinion. they've kind of refined it. One thing I will warn people on though is it felt a lot tougher than number one. I don't know whether it is because I was out of practice, but it's certainly a lot more. It felt a lot more challenging, um, mm. and it was something I kind of struggled to get to grips with. Once you get in the flow of things and you start building your character up, using the powers and, you know, trying to trying to get through the game however you want, then you can have a great time with it. Um but yeah, I, I think it's a it's a it's a great sequel and certainly deserves to sell better than it than it apparently has. So there you go. There's apps apps uh thoughts on the game. He's gonna give you a score which he's gonna go for drum roll. <laughs> so it's gonna be a fucking bite. And yeah. a silver grading, so same as this on uh, so the original. We're on another level, so we're keeping it stone. So it's definitely worth giving a purchase. I'm yet to play it actually, so yeah. this has given me a bit of a buzz to go and give it a go. It's one, it's one I've been wanting to on the backlog. But there you yeah. go, Dishonored Two, Arcane Studios gets itself a buy it rating and a silver for the scoreboard so that will live long in the dimp history it's written down so, the spreadsheet now locked in locked in so <laughs> no thanks for joining us apps for that um you can Cheer get mate. us on all the social media uh, youtube yes. facebook twitter forward slash dimp digital that's the one um, and that's it until next time ta-da